That's right, that's right. Good call uh, open. Mm. Oh yes, that Great that is open. that's right, viewers. Call now at one eight hundred call now. Don't ask me what we're gonna sell you. Just call now. One eight hundred call now. Call don't ask me Do what it. It's call for. right now. Call it now. If you don't call it now, the next twenty seconds. Well, you better call now. One eight hundred flatline. I'll unplug your grandmother for you. At one eight hundred. The numbers in the back of your parents' credit card. <laughs> yes. Type in your comments what what you called. You know. Type your social security and credit card number in the in the comments. Yeah, quest for the core. Do not condone this behavior. However, if you do this behavior, uh, not my <laughs> fault. You lost a thousand dollars. Don't be surprised when your bank accounts are drained. <laughs> exactly. Lamel. Anyway, hello, welcome, Coast Corner K4, episode uh, mid to late seventies, I think. I believe so. We are oh. past retirement age, gentlemen. Damn, bro. That doesn't what? put well for bonus. He was already old. <laughs> no, it doesn't. You know what? Now that it's late 70s, I think Nox is just going to pull over and retire mid. Retire <laughs> <laughs> like Roth IRA is finally starting to come in handy. Just like call Dapper up. Be like, yeah, I'm not finishing this job, Dapper. You got to get come here and. and Finish this, this retire. time. I'm retiring. I'm sorry, Dapper. I gotta retire. But yeah, you're like 24. <laughs> uh, yeah, not I'm not problem. <laughs> I may be 24, but this is episode 70 something. You need to retire too, Dapper. <laughs> the commentary just gets super meta. It's, it's like, <laughs> uh, you know, we. I feel like we've been doing this for like, I don't know, maybe like 70 episodes. Uh, I don't know. If what I had to put a number to it, I'd say around 70. <laughs> God, imagine animating that and they break the fourth wall. Look at the viewer and being like, we're on episode 70 and you still haven't subscribed? Why are you watching us and not subscribing? <laughs> You've watched 140 God, I... plus epi uh, hours of, of me talking to myself? Because my friends don't exist. I've you shot at at least over a thousand times and you're still not subbed to Codian Gaming? Fuck Honestly, friends. we need to... At 100 episodes, we need to do a 100 episode special. Where Dakota reveals that, uh, in fact, all the rest of us are just him with the voice changer. He's the only one person <laughs> in these sessions. Yeah, actually, I mean, these videos are it. all incredibly well edited. Okay, uh, just the voices in his head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You he think that I'm, I'm editing that, friends, but I'm not. But the illusion of friends. <laughs> he says he doesn't edit these videos, but we know it's true. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going back and adding like additional voice tracks over myself talking. Uh, I have a very long script in front of me every episode. It <laughs> takes so is long. Everything spliced and timed perfectly. Yeah, it takes forever to, to write one of these episodes because I have to, to write the full script for all, like, four of us uh, on top yeah. of the actual campaign. Well, well, well four of you. Well, yeah, four, we, I mean... Four of me. But we are, we are me and you are we. Uh, yeah. yeah. We exactly. are Quest for the Core. <laughs> yes, we are. We are Cody and Gaming, okay? I I am Cody Gaming. I am the one who dies. I am an AI known as Cody and Gaming. Uh, I am the channel. I am the channel. The entire channel is me. Yeah, last time on Schizocore, uh, <laughs> our group uh, arrived in New Orleans, and uh, did some shenaniganery. They uh, the same day, I think. Yeah, yeah. It was they, they arrived. <laughs> they spent oh, a no, long we time. Fled, they fled a day later. Oh yeah, yeah. Because you guys had to take we a nap. We were at rested. Of, yeah, we're had to take a nap a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys showed up. You spent a very long time debating over the ethical considerations uh, of, of what has happened and how you were going to convince uh, Maria and Maria Jr. to come with you guys. Uh, and you did eventually figure it out uh, decently, I guess. And, uh, you know, you, 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 you did it, I guess. Uh, Maria Jr. and Maria were rescued from the horrible clutches of their 
uh, husband slash father's previous uh, dive gang, the Driftwoods. Bonus. All it took was several counts of murder to get them out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bonus had a bit of a fist fight and a sword fight with a really large man, uh, and he his shield got a little bit damaged as a, as a result of that encounter. And then, um, you know, Bonus brought Cairo to meet up with Bonus's old friend, uh, a, a mysterious uh, other dive gang gang leader by the name of Beckett, who is the older brother of Malachi, the group's uh, arms dealer contact. Pretty chill That was dude. cool. Yeah. Um, good old, good old <laughs> sci-fi pirate. And then the group got back in their vehicles and fled the scene of uh, several murders, leaving New Orleans behind them. Maybe for good. Who knows? So, this episode will begin with me scrolling through Pinterest in the background, and then, and only then, uh, will I roll a dice to determine uh, the random encounter that shall occur first. How would you look at that? It's the one where Maria Jr. dies. (laughs) I knew I shouldn't have accidentally pointed my Deagle Streeter head when a road bump came. (laughs) What oh, a strategic well. accident. How could <laughs> no. we ever have prevented this from happening? I know. Honestly. Truly, truly. <clears throat> this says something speak. about gun safety. <laughs> Guns do do be killing people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Guns are lethal, kids. You know, maybe them. maybe the, the real gun safety was their friends would meet along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Although, actually, it doesn't really work now that they're dead. Now, only Maria Jr. died, so I can, like, you know, take Maria, I guess. I mean, Maria can always make another one. What, seven more years or six more years? However old she was. <laughs> What's seven six? more years? Don't worry, Maria. I'll, um... Something. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so you guys spend uh, a few hours, like two or three hours, driving down the hyperway. Uh, with Maria, Maria Jr. in Bonus's hover car. Uh, Dr. Vanderhouse driving the Vanderhaus. That's what I'm going to call the box truck from now on. Um, but like it's Vander spelled. Truck? Yeah, but it's spelled like, va- like Van dash D E R dash H O U S E. Or I guess you could still spell it D E R H A U S because it'd be. Then it, then it would be Van of House in German. <laughs> or Van the House, one of the two, I don't remember. Uh, anyway, my German grammar is lacking. So, in your usual convoy configuration, I assume, yeah. uh, you all driving down the road. Uh, is I assume Cairo is still going to be in front then, yeah? Yeah. Okay. So as you guys are driving along the hyperway, uh, the environment is very different from, from how it was in New Orleans and Atlanta and around Ryanstown. Now you're getting into the sort of uh, open plains, grasslands, kind of Texas savanna, kind of uh, deep south, dry, wet, not dry, wet, uh, dry, hot, subtropical climate. Um, a lot of like tumbleweeds and cacti and less uh, real, like trees. Uh, and that makes it pretty easy to see stuff because the ground is very flat and there's not many, you know, big clumps of, of woodlands to uh, break up the horizon line. So it becomes very obvious as you're kind of standing far off. We're not standing, but you're driving far off, uh, kind of this big, windy hyperway section. And off the side of the road, probably like a hundred yards or so. Uh, away from the hyperway, there are four guys uh, standing around what looks like to be a a big pit in the ground. Okay. Yeah. Looks like they're standing Uh, over a big pit. I mean, I'll tell the others, I guess. 
Hey, I got, uh, there's like four guys over here, it looks like, standing over a hole. Uh, they are armed with, like, AKs and, uh, like, micro SMGs. And they seem to be, um, you know, staring at something in the pit. Huh. Um, I don't know, what's the call? What do we want to do? I mean, last time well, we what does the gear look like? Is it, uh... What was that? <coughs> what is the gear like? Uh, what's their what gear, the gear like? like? I uh, mean, I don't know, I can't. yeah, I you guys, you guys would need, um, right? yeah, you need to make a, 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 a check for that. Right, a we'll check that. for that? Oh my god. Uh, that's a seven. Uh, well, you see that, you know, before they, that they are carrying, like, AKs. Uh, assault rifles and stuff like that. They don't look like, you know, corporate level. Like, they're not well-maintained rifles and, and weaponry. They look more like, you know, these... Just what they had, like, lying around, or...? Well, it, yeah, it looks kind of like, um... Like, like your standard militiamen, you know? Kind of half-coupled together, kind of hastily repaired, maybe been run over by a jeep a couple times. <laughs> Just for good measure. Uh. Kind of weapons. Um, not quite like African bush war weaponry, but like, you know, more like, uh, more not like drug as, cartel weaponry. Not as efficiently put together. Yeah, yeah. Um. Well, I'm gonna say, I don't know if we need to like, I don't, I don't think we need to encounter this personally. I don't think they're much of a threat right now. It's up to you guys. I mean, unless someone else wants to, like, encounter this. I don't, I don't, I, I don't know if this is just gonna get us into trouble with them. Are you gonna shoot him this time? I don't know if I have to. Define have to. If they shoot at us, or raise their weapons against us, I will. I mean, unless they're just totally normal dudes standing by a hole. That does sound like normal dude stuff to do. But why are they... <laughs> like, are they... Okay, here's my question. Are they, like, pointing their guns at it? No, they all seem to be kind of, like, standing around this pit. Um, and it's, like, probably a solid 20 by 20 feet. Like, it's big. It's not small. Um... And they're kind of just like standing around, like chit chatting. Like you see, as you guys kind of get almost parallel with them, you see that like one of them hands the other guy like a cigarette, and they and they like a couple of them start smoking. Um, and from this distance, with that seven, uh, I'll say that you can probably figure from like the tattoos and their outfits uh, and the kind of state of their weapons that these guys look like barenderos which are um, the, like, uh, Aztec gangsters. Oh, no. oh. Yeah, they're then the no. actual <laughs> drug dealers of the cartel. I don't think we want to encounter these guys then. I don't think we're here for, like, a nice chat at that point. I mean, I don't know, man. It's competition. <gasps> you know what? For me specifically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Honestly, hey, feel though? free. You know what? Maybe we should ask Maria Jr. if she wants to say hi. No, uh, let's not let the child make the choices. I, uh, where is Maria Jr.? Maria Jr. is in bonus The child is a literal fucking child. I, I sub vocal the bonus. I'm like, hey, bonus. A ask Maria Jr. how she feels about those four guys. Uh, bonus tells you that she says they look scary. Well, that's all the confirmation this child, I needed. This child's a little smart. All right, well, what about what about you, Lloyd? You you feel that threatened by these guys all the way out here? <clears throat> Let me, as uh, uh, funny as it would be to you know, walk up and uh, accuse them of stealing my business. I think I'm not going to do that. In fact. All right, 
then I, I guess the convoy <laughs> will move on, though. I think moving forward is one of the best options for us at this moment. Okay, so you guys ignore the strange pit with the I mean, cartel members hey, in it. Hey, who knows? We could have gotten thrown into Brazil. That, that's Honestly. a bro, bad. whole straight to Brazil? <laughs> Server right to Brazil. Do not pass God. go. Do not collect $200. We got the fucking... <laughs> we got the Brazil encounter, essentially. God, it's a whole straight to Brazil. <clears throat> Sounds like it. Uh, all right. In that case, well, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I wrote yeah, I'm this so encounter. Disappointed. I'm gonna do... <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not disappointed about that, but I rolled a, uh, I rolled, I rolled an encounter. Is it an encounter you enjoyed? It's an you want us to pull over, Mr. DM? <laughs> well, it's certainly an encounter. You'll see. So, you guys, um, <laughs> describe the pit. Fire comes from it. <laughs> a demon climbs out of the pit. It is yeah. Beelzebub himself. Come to smite the heathens. <laughs> no, please. Roll initiative. Spare Maria Jr. She did a lot of things wrong, but please spare her. Uh, no, it's me. The devil. <laughs> it's me. From the Bible. <laughs> I'm, you know, the devil from the Bible. It's me, the, the Greek Bible Orthodox Bible. devil. It's a Bible. I can beat, beat me with, with the power of friendship and stuff, but I am, you know, the devil from the Bible. Yeah. All right. right. Well, I guess I guess we miss it. You know, we miss. Uh, <laughs> we miss that on all, all. As, Little did you know, those uh, Benderas were going to give you one hundred million dollars <laughs> just for walking up to them. I'd, yeah, bro, I'd sure. pull over immediately. <laughs> if if they pulled up with a van that said free 100 million collars, Knox would kill everyone and take the free 100 million collars. Remind me not to put up a sign anyway that says free 100 million collars. Oh. It'll attract the wrong kind of people. <laughs> so, you guys, um... You guys continue driving along, having ignored the obvious plot hook placed in front of you. Oh, uh, sorry, let, let's rewind a bit for that obvious plot hook. <laughs> nah, bro, yeah. it's too late. Too oh, late, the damn, gods have spoken. Uh, Alright, as we're driving guys, by, you know, <laughs> just, just to, you know, really, really push it in our choice, I, uh, reach out the side window and I gun them down. <laughs> Alright, bonus flushes hover car into the pit, and it's a, it's a hole to a Gartha. Uh, uh, <laughs> the Hollow Earth. We're missing out. Yeah. Um, bonus and Maria and Maria Jr. Reforge a new life as tribals in the dinosaur land of the Hollow Earth. Uh, meanwhile, back up in the surface world. Uh, in an alternate timeline, but that doesn't happen. Uh, what a cursed time on that time on that would be, huh? Um, you guys keep driving for another hour or so. Uh, approaching the halfway point in your trip. Well, not quite, but you're getting there. Uh, and and you see up on the hyperway, and you know before you know like between Atlanta and New Orleans and in Atlanta and Ryanstown, the hyperway has been like pretty busy. There's been a lot of vehicles driving to and fro. Not like traffic, but you know you you see people. Uh, but from the road to New Orleans to Lone Star. There is very few cars, and most of them are, like, you know, big commercial trucks moving corporate, you know, cargo and stuff from location to location. Um, but for some reason, you see, riding on the shoulder of the hyperway up ahead, is what looks like uh, an, a dude with, like, you know, a full, like, wide-brim cowboy hat full, like, brown leather cowboy trench coat, riding a horse along the shoulder. I really thought you were about to hit us with that wide brim Yankee. <laughs> Yankee all brim. It's just a solid disc. God damn. You got that yeah. Yankee with all brim. And why all brim? No cap. 
no cap. Man, so there's just a guy out there, you know, with all this technology, but he chooses to ride. A, are you telling me this place has a horse only lane? I mean, no, he's he's riding Literally. like on the shoulder, like where you're, you know, for like broken Not down supposed, supposed to, to ride. Go? Yeah. You know? But because this dude's horse can't go Mach 3 on the hyperway like some people's vehicles, uh, he figured it was easier to ride on the shoulder and get a ticket maybe than ride on like the slow lane and get pulverized. <laughs> I immediately moved to the <laughs> shoulder just to prove him wrong. <laughs> no. Wow. Uh, I think what I'll do, you know, I'll strike up a conversation with this random local because we missed the other plot hook, so might as well get this plot hook, you know? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, so I'll you pull so... over with this giant cyber. You're pulling truck. over to talk to this guy? <laughs> no, I'm I'm going in the slow lane, right? So I imagine this hyperway is made up of multiple lanes, and mm -hmm. the one closest to the shoulder this is, is slow the lane. slowest lane. Yeah. Well, we're all going in the slow lane. Yeah. Yes. The okay. convoy is going in the slow lane. Many people are questioning our, our methods, but fuck them. This is a cool encounter. <laughs> I mean, so is the Aztec pit people, but... <laughs> Bro, I'm gonna add that to, the, to, to that list of possible encounters. Aztec pit Aztec people. Pit people. You see a big hole in the ground with a bunch of guys in there, like, chilling. <laughs> see, now if you describe them in the pit, now... <laughs> now you've got my interest. Mm. Um, but yes. I'll pull over. I'll be like... It, it, or drive over. There we go. I don't want to pull over. I'd be like, excuse me, sir, you, uh, you, where'd you get the horse? Uh, okay, so you, uh, started riding at, like, you know, 15 miles an hour next to this guy on the horse, uh, when you see that this is a very old-looking man, uh, I'm, I'm talking, like, uh, uh, oh, God, who's, who's the actor who has, like, the cowboy narrator voice? Shoot. Oh. Um. I know who you're talking about. I have his face in my mind, but I don't know who, what his name is. Anyway. Type in the comments now. Anyway, it looks like that guy. The guy, like, mm. he's in, he in the movie Tombstone. And, like, a bunch of other movies. He played, like, the narrator for, like, every Western movie ever. <laughs> like, period. Mm. Um. I'm pretty sure he narrated Tombstone, too. Anyway. Great actor. Um. I mean, he looks like that guy, but like like twice as old. This dude, this dude is is like ninety something minimum, and looks like he could keel over any minute. Uh, and he's like, he's probably the, like the most sun dried, jerky man you've ever seen in your life. This dude uh, is he... obviously a grizzled adventurer or a veteran of some kind, uh, and is no 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 newbie to the the rough rougher parts of the hyperway and you pull up to this guy um and and he's just like riding along kind of bobbing left and right with this horse that also looks like a pretty old horse and uh the second that you guys like slow down to, to match you with him and his horse um he like his like head snaps to look at you and like one of his eyes like glows as a cyber eye and like it, it like twists like the retina like you know I just uh, realized he just hears words. a loudspeaker I do not have windows yeah you don't have windows don't do you <laughs> yeah you have you just have like a, a ham radio of like a like a, like a mm -hmm. PA speaker on the roof um and he snaps and looks at the wall of this capsule cockpit um and like his his hand immediately twitches to like his hip but he like saps himself um, uh, uh, what do you ask him? I asked him, where'd you get the horse? Um, like, oh, I've, I've had old Bessie here for 15 years. 15 Does he actually years. sound that de demented? Yes, he does. This guy, this guy definitely looks like he's got a few nuts and bolts loose. <sighs> Man, I don't know if I want to give this guy the cool cowboy giant eyebrows and mustache and where it moves, that's when you see his eyes, but <laughs> it's up to you if you want to give it to this one. You know the one I'm talking about. This, 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 this guy this looks pretty clean shaven. Hmm. Alright, well I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, oh, 15 years? Well, where'd you pick her up? Just randomly, or...? 
I used to run my what? family's farm. On your family's farm? What farm would that be? Uh, he, he like squints suspiciously. I'm only asking, not for a friend, but because I might want a horse. Look, if your horse is left, horse? don't ask me where I'm going to put a horse. I'm striking a conversation with a, a, a history right here. All right, I don't know what history he's seen, but he's seen history. Uh, okay. So, yeah, this guy just, like, keeps, um, keeps, keeps, keeps staring at the side of the cockpit. Uh, and he's like, look, all right, if you're not gonna give me, give me a warrior's death, then I don't, I don't want any business with you. you I would have you, well, hold on, you, you want me to kill you? In a fair duel. In a, let me get this straight. You are riding the side of this hyperway. In hopes that one day one schmuck pulls over and talks to you and you convince them to kill you in an honorable duel? <laughs> Correct. Well, I have a friend for you. <laughs> God damn it! And now, I'm assuming by fair duel you mean revolver on revolver, yes? I mean, I'm not that particular. Oh. Well, I mean, if you were, I also have another another friend for you I mean does he have a revolver I don't know you, you I mean he hasn't flashed any weapons yet yeah I'm like well where 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 do you where do you want it you know just in case said friend or friends want to participate um, he's like we're right here and then he just falls off the side of his horse without stopping the horse he <laughs> lands in lands in the dust on the side of the hyperway <laughs> Uh, I call over a bonus, I'm like, listen, bonus, I know that there's a kid in the car, so you think she'll take this off? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what, old guy yeller this old man on the kidding. side of the hyperway? I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I, just, I just thought about it for a second, you know, intrusive thoughts be wild. However, mm, um, mm. And what I am wondering, though, uh, is, uh, it's either, uh, you know, anyone want to take up this old man? Because if not, I don't know, you know, if he wants to die by a woman or a man or what he might think is a man, talking old, old or, I you mean, know, I've too old draw. man. Assumably he has quick draw. I mean, he said honorable duel, so whichever. I mean, I'm not saying quick draw isn't honorable, but yeah. What, what do you think, bonus? You or Kyra, which one you want to take it? Maybe, maybe we'll even let him pick. Let's hope he doesn't pick Maria Jr. <laughs> yes, because it's, it's the honorable thing to do to pick a, a six-year-old girl to be the one to try to kill you. Hey, <laughs> you never know. She might have quick draw and a big enough <laughs> iron. It whips out a forty-four Magnum, domes this old man from across the street. Well, I, I think we should pull this over. You know, I'll, I'll everyone in agreements to you know uh, give yeah, this man yeah, his I'll, I'll, last. I'll... I'll pull over. Sure, we'll we'll pull over. <laughs> you know, we'll take a minute. I'll. Uh, I don't know. Someone can stop the horse if they want. Um. And then uh, I'll, I'll get out. Yeah. And I'll approach this old man and I'll be like, "Well." You just I... threw himself off his fucking horse. I don't. Yeah, so. he's he's still yeah. lying on his side on the ground. I I reach out a hand to him like. Yeah. Okay, the Need second you reach there? towards him, a gun is under your chin. Like the instant. Just I look at him at you, and you like I super go... wide eyed, and he's like, his whole body is like shaking. I'm like, all right, you know what? He said honorable I'll him, duel, I'll take him my up guy. On his duel. I'll take him up on his duel because I know a way to do this without killing him. And he's like, I mean, you, you look yeah, like one of them Aztecs. Come. What? No. Trust me, if, if we were Aztec we scum, we would have been around the pit. <laughs> the <laughs> you got pit. a point. If <laughs> if we were Aztecs, we wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. Then he like very slowly lowers the revolver, and it's like a straight up like 1860s Smith and Wesson. Like this is not a science fiction revolver. This is a normal revolver. 
Ricardo. You know, it kind of makes me wonder, how the fuck did this guy get out of here? Like, what is he, what is he doing? Why does he want this death? Well, that's, that's why we're gonna ask him. And that's why we're gonna did... kill him like he wants, alright? Yeah, yeah, we're just gonna straight up look, uh, and my hand's still outstretched. Like, I, he f didn't, he flinched, I didn't, you know, type of deal. I look mm. at him and I'll be like, so, uh, you, you gonna take the dual line down or standing up? I am standing. He's not standing. <laughs> uh, old timer, uh, it, it would it would appear to me as though you're lying on the ground. And he and he, and he like rolls over onto his stomach, like face down on the ground, and he just goes, "So I'm not." <laughs> uh, I'll clear my throat again. I go, Ahem. if I remember correctly, the ground is not beneath your feet, but beneath your stomach. And he like stands up, and you know pats himself off, gets the gets the dust off of him, and he's like, and he, and he, he looks uh, at just like all of you with like this one like super wide bloodshot, crazed, organic eye, and like a super high tech, uh, like cyber eye. And just standing there, like really wide, bow legged, you know, like a, an ancient cowboy. I'm sub, I'm, I'm sub over a bonus, Mike. Bonus, you might want to write up that contract about this honorable duel. I don't think anyone's gonna believe we just gunned down an old man, honorably. I mean, uh, well, if I if I can if I can have it go the way I want it to, he won't die. Dude. Uh, bonus sub buckles back and says, um, there aren't really any laws down here. Like, you guys are in the estates. Oh, yeah, we are in the hyperway. <laughs> yeah, we're in the estates and yeah. the hyperway. The, the only law is the law of whoever is around. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's honor amongst word. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, be kind of funny in that case. I mean, we don't even know the law we would be following. We don't know his name. <laughs> mm, true, true, true. Well, <clears throat> uh, I clear my throat and I, I look at him and I'm like, well, since you want an honorable death, looks over to Cairo. I should ask, what is your name, old head? As I go to my name generator. <laughs> Cowboy name generator? Yeah, bro, I got that on deck. <laughs> don't think I don't. This is going to turn out to be someone's like grandpa that went missing like 12 years ago. <laughs> Well, he's a, a dementia-ridden cowboy. Missing now. <laughs> yeah, he, like you're gonna go into the and and like some five-year-old boy is gonna be like, "You seen my grandpa? He disappeared yesterday." And be dementia. like, "Why? Yes, actually, that that old." You mean lady. this one? I I show a selfie of Cairo like over his dead body. <laughs> <laughs> Christ, Not another one. Money. <laughs> Where'd that bag full of money come from? Don't ask questions, kid. Questions get you shot, kid. Uh, the, the old man tells the you that his his name is Otto Kraft. Otto, Otto Kraft. Kraft. Well, <laughs> Otto Kraft, I must uh, ask you that you will be, or not ask you, but tell you, my friend, that one, I point to Cairo, will be the one dueling you, you know. And he looks at... at uh, Cairo from like you know, ten paces, and uh, and he just like slowly like shuffles his his like bowed feet, and like turns go, wait, like two wait, degrees wait, wait, at a time. I, <laughs> I, I clear my throat. Go, <clears throat> not not yet. Oh. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know if my friend over there wants a uh, few words with you before you know <clears throat> this honorable duel. This possible warrior's uh, death you've been seeking out? Uh, I'll take out the... Uh, should I use the Wingo Osiris or the GMSR-5? I mean, look, as far as we understand, you're the one that may or may not kill him, so if you still want this old head to be alive, although he said he wants to die, be my guess. I'll use the GMSR-5. <laughs> and I'll do I'll I'll do my uh, I'll pull it out and like empty out one, all but one round. Okay. 
And then I'll uh, auto craft into is the like revolver. just looking at you like, who the hell uses just one round? Oh, old timer, that's what I'll, that's all I need. But, uh, so if you don't mind me asking, what brings you all the way out here? Uh, it's like my name's Auto Craft. And that's it. He just looks at you like he's done eight lines of coke in the past five minutes. <laughs> It just suddenly the sun is perfect even though it's a new day and it's, just... <laughs> it's it's exactly high noon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm you. gonna ask everybody else in the party. Alright, do I actually shoot the kill or do I take it easy on the old timer? What I mean I mean this guy is off his fucking rocker, so <laughs> I imagine so if you don't even if he did live, I don't I'm not sure what we would gain from it. Just saying, if, if you don't kill him, he's gonna kill you. <laughs> well, the, the the original plan was I'm gonna shoot the gun out of his hand, but I kind of want the gun. I mean, you could get that by killing him. <laughs> this is true, but should I? <laughs> he's wanting I mean, honorable death, Mike. Could you? Would you? These are these are questions. You know, we would all. Uh, fine, I'll shoot there. him and I'll make it quick. Yes, this is what we want. Actually, uh, out of character, DM, you want like the the lengthy old timer, like, oh, finally my timer, or just like this man's dead. He gets no last words. What type of death are you looking for here? I mean, I I know if if you if you kill him, I know, like I already have the cutscene in my head. So, all right, cool. doesn't matter what you guys. I do, mean, so long as I you mean, him. If, if if I kill him, I'm at least gonna be kind to him in his last moments. I mean, of course, we're all gonna be kind to him. He's a cool guy, you know. Yeah. Um, and he's all like, right. the, you can, you can, you can call me steel, but not like thievery. I'm talking like the metal. All right. A pleasure to meet you. He changed his name. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. And I, I'd, I, I'd, you know, push the two. Or, bring the two a little bit further away from the vehicles and have uh, Maria Jr. strapped in Bonus's car watching the death of an old man. <laughs> Alright, I'll, uh, I'll take my stance. Yeah, uh, and you know, I, I make them do however many paces they care to do. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's supposed to, it's usually 10, right? So that you're like yeah, yeah, 20, like 30 paces. feet apart or whatever. 10 paces. Yeah, yeah. and then, uh... But he's like uh, really I'll slow, like... and he walks like the really over-exaggerated like waddle. Limp. Yeah, and like he has really big spurs on his boots. They'd be able to like... Honestly, this is this is too funny, you know. This blast uh, from the past. I'm going to record this duel between him and Tyron. Oh, that's exactly while, what I was going to do. <laughs> while, while we're walking the ten paces, I'll turn to him and I'll be like, Well, you got any family? Uh, like, nope. Us desperado type don't have no family. Keeps the business simple that way. Alright, and then, All um... Because right. I, was, I, was, I, was, I was going to be nice and, you know, inform the family. Ah, uh, I see, I see. And well, well, you guys can make uh, an intelligence check to know what he's talking about. Well, yeah, uh, I was sure. gonna... Actually, I don't think I was gonna do that. I was gonna do something else. Uh... That's a seven. Uh, seven. <clears throat> Alright, this is where I get the wiki up. So I can give uh, accurate information. Alright, so... Uh, you know the term desperado uh, is technically like the Aztec version of this slang term. Um, probably the ones you guys would be familiar with are like trappers, scalpers, hunters, or wranglers. Um, and they are a very specific kind of um, like wandering, semi-nomadic, uh, wild west assassin. Um oh. And, and they dedicate their lives to hunting baranderos, either as bounty hunters, guns for hire, or wanton murderers. Often they have personal vendettas against the Aztecs or baranderos, and so are especially dedicated and skilled in their bloody business. Hmm. Um, there are probably like, a lot of like films uh, made about these guys, because they are just like sci-fi like, gunslinging cowboys. cowboys. Um, and this guy seems to be like a real retro desperado for some reason. Uh. No.
So yeah, there's that. All right. That's what you know. <laughs> okay. And then I'll go, uh, well, steel, or auto, uh, any, any, any last wishes, you know, you, you want to be buried somewhere or something like that? Uh, and he just, like, he, he doesn't, he, he's still walking those ten paces, by the way. Uh, yeah. Ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. Uh, and he, without turning over his shoulder, he's just like, bury me in my jacket. Noted. <laughs> and then he moves totally ten paces, and then he very slowly turns a little bit at a time. <laughs> and then uh, I'll be like, now when I say go, you can fight. Oh, I was going to say shot in the air. <laughs> oh, yeah, that works too. <clears throat> when I shoot this in the air, I like, I don't know, I take like one of the... Sure, I'll use my deagle, why not? It's, I it's, more, my it's more appropriate that way. Sure, I'll, I'll appropriately use my deagle. Um, and I'll be like, when, I, when you... When you hear this gun go off, <coughs> fire. All right. And then uh, and then I look at them. Do do they both seem ready? Is everyone ready? I'll yes, take no. my stance. Old man, old man Otto is ready. He's been ready. He was born right. ready, perhaps. Oh yeah. And then I do like a one, a two, a three, and then I fire. All right. So I need uh, Cairo and Old Man Otto to roll me first an agility check. Okay. Well, well one d10 and add your agility. That stat. is a ten. Ten. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, and then I need you to roll me a perception check. Okie dokie. I'm using Quick Draw, by the way. <clears throat> so that adds a minus two, but I think because of my targeting suite. Like a minus one, then. I think a minus one, yeah. And I also. Oh! Oh. Oh, never mind. That's not what it does. Okay. You were you thinking of recoil damage? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a nine. A nine. Okay. So. Nox's Deagle. <laughs> fires high into the high noon sky clear Texan desert air well probably not quite Texan yet probably more like Mississippi um Mississippi is Mississippi I don't know the air <laughs> and uh there is a a a you know flashes of metal and steel and there are two gunshots that go off Oh. Yes, there are two gunshots that, uh, that, that that permeate the air. Oh, I got Am it. I hit? Okay. Uh, so, flash <laughs> of steel, gunshots go off. Like the kick of dust. And when the dust settles, there is the old man with his gun aimed forwards right at Cairo's forehead. The hammer pushed forward as if it had fired. He stands there, shaking, on unsteady feet, two bullet holes in his chest. Cairo, you did shoot him. You did hit him pretty easily. Over your shoulder is Bonus, firing as well. The old man's gun would have hit you first, but it malfunctioned what? and didn't go off. I knew when he said the hammer hit as if he rolled a one. Or it so malfunctioned. Wait. <laughs> what, are you, what are you waiting for? Are you realizing you would have died? <laughs> yeah, buddy, that's right. Old head got well, some quick well, hands. He wouldn't have died. He's got a well. bionic mask. Oh, yeah, it's got a good armor on, but... Yeah, but I've got know, armor as well, yeah. Rule of cool, you know, if this was a movie, then yes. that's how it would have gone. Yes. So, so he's then, just uh, standing there? Yeah, well, he's kind of, like, standing there, and, uh, you know, like, the, the, the gun, you know, part of the, the barrel in the chamber, like, smoking from where the, the, the round uh, didn't burn off properly. 
he can't what get is a, his quick draw? He kind of drops the gun and like stumbles forwards and he says, Thank you. And then <laughs> collapses in a heap. <clears throat> Alright. <laughs> well, yeah, walk over to him. Yeah. I make sure he dead. Well, we, he's dead. Yes, he's very dead. 44 and 58, he's very <laughs> dead. There are two golf ball sized holes in his torso. <laughs> Uh, are are his eyes open? Uh, at this point, no. I think he probably would have closed them by the mm, okay. Died. And then uh, <clears throat> oh, oh, uh, I don't know. Kind of, you know, carefully scavenge him, respecting him mainly. So that well, was what his I stuff was gonna was... do. What I was what? gonna do was I was gonna take his hat, put it on his chest, and put his hands on it. I mean, yeah, but I also want, like, all his stuff under his hat. <laughs> That's just uh, He doesn't have anything on him besides, what? uh, like, his, <laughs> you know, gun belt with some spare bullets on it and his pistol. Um, and upon closer inspection, you don't know if his gun would have worked, like, on any Anyways. shot he'd taken. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll inspect the gun to see what, what's actually, like, wrong with it. It's just ancient. Ancient, very, very well used. I'll fix it up. <laughs> so I'll like, I'll like put it in, uh, like tuck it in my belt. Cause my holsters are full. Yeah. Cool. Well, mm -hmm. Okay. Right. I think what I'm gonna do is, you know, they say, uh, what's that saying? I'm trying to remember it full. I'm missing a word. It's like, um, copying is the highest form of flattery or something like that. Oh, mimicry is the highest form of flattery? Mimicry. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm gonna steal his face. <laughs> okay. So you steal uh, the dead cowboy's face. I'll have, I'll have Bonus come over and start helping me to dig a dig a proper grave for this man. Yeah, yeah, Bonus, uh, he's already on it. And then another I'm not gonna steal off his corpse, because that would be, you know, disrespectful, of course. But I do want to see, what kind of eye was he rocking? Okay, give me an intelligence check. Ooh, a nine. <laughs> For the record, I am absolutely going to find a gunsmith in Lone Star and have them fix up this gun. Man, why don't you get immediately arrested as that's the famous Desperados, you know, 18 whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was a well-known Desperado in his day. Not so much anymore, but you figure he probably has some kind of reputation. Um, but Mr. Oid, as you look over this guy's body, um, you realize that he had a lot more chrome in him than you might have initially suspected this old man might have been ancient, but he wasn't no uh, Luddite. Uh, underneath his uh, the skin of his firing hand was a bionic arm uh, with the quick draw modification on it, so he was, he was supernaturally fast. Um, he also <laughs> had uh, attached into his spine a bunch of like nerve folds and uh, like anti efficiency stuff to give him extra reactions, so he was extra quick uh, in that regard. And his eye uh, has the highest level eye aiming mod you can possibly get, and that is Dead Eye. So he didn't—he didn't actually have to roll for that second check. He just—he just auto hit Cairo. Jeez! Looks like I need to look at the bionic list again. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I think it's like super expensive. And you need a contact to uh, get access to the thing because it's like stupidly rare. But yeah, like how much it is auto it? hits? I don't remember. All oh, right, so okay, so okay, I'll look over to Cairo, you know, digging this hole, and I'll, you know, say to him, you know, it's lucky that guy's gonna soul because you know he was cheating the whole time. Yeah, I should have seen that one coming. <laughs> and I have been very expensive. Yeah, that's some oh, well. top of line stuff. That's why Bonus cheated too. 
because he <laughs> he knew. <laughs> Honestly, I was tempted to. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna honorable duel, and then suddenly four gunshots. Like, what? <laughs> so fuck, guys, I had it. It's like, no, no, you did not. You were the only one fooled. The veil is and van, machine gun opens up. It's <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> dum, 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 dum. Um, yeah, but now that this guy is buried with his stuff, um, you know, going on. Well, even if he did win, I would have taken a shot. <laughs> Yeah, but what kind of? Just... I, I want to know what kind of ammo was his gun rocking. Oh, I forget what the 1860 model revolver. Bro, well, it's gonna it's gonna it's be like... in my inventory soon enough. It has like one giant barrel, one giant cylinder, and then suddenly <laughs> we're like, wait a minute, this guy was gonna shoot with a fucking 50 40, it's caliber. A 40, it's a 40 millimeter uh, anti aircraft. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I think it would have been Colt single I think it would be would have been the Navy revolver version, which is mm. the. I think it's like roughly it's either equivalent to nine millimeter or forty five, in modern, ammo or size. I don't remember. Uh, That's not that big. <laughs> the Colt single action. Just for reference, Colt single action is chambered in 45 Colt, but it, which is basically like the um, revolver version of 45 ACP. But it can be chambered in 45 ACP. Uh, but it also comes in a slew of other rounds, including like 22 LR, 38 Special, 357, 44 Special, uh, like a bajillion I'm other ones. Definitely getting it rechambered. Yeah, yeah, but his is in uh, is in forty five. Mm. That how much damage does that do? Same in two D one hundred. Two D one hundred. Mine did two D twelve times ten. So I don't know if that's better or worse. I mean, it's better damage. Oh. I could have. Well, it, even if he did hit me, I could have tanked that. I mean, yeah. Well, like all of us can tank it. We're just, you know, saying for the rule of cool. Yeah. 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 Who knows? He could have rolled a ten. <laughs> he could have been instant dead. Mm. Blam. This is true. Blown away. Yeah. Reduced to atoms. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so atoms you guys, have uh, been reduced. Finish your digging. It doesn't take terribly long. And uh, you lay. Mr. Mr. Auto Steel Mobile, whatever his name is, Craft, Auto Craft. Steel uh, Auto Craft. Yeah. You lay him to rest, and then you uh, head off on your way. Yeah. Back to the house, Maria and Maria Jr. are thoroughly confused. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, "What was that really necessary? Did you have <laughs> to do that?" Yes. Yes. Don't understand, ladies. You don't understand. They really don't. It's a cowboy code. <laughs> <laughs> he was a good man. It's a matter of honor. So yeah, um, you guys keep on trucking. Literally, in some cases, metaphorically, in others. And uh, yeah, having left. Left that behind. <laughs> you guys drive uh, into the afternoon at this point. It's like, you know, two or three in the afternoon. And you guys are still in the slow lane, going your, you know, little putt putt like 70 miles per hour because it's on the hyperway and there must be limits. Um, and uh, you, you zoom past, like, you know, in like the highway where there'll be like those little areas where it, you could, if you wanted to, you could cut across the median between the mm. two sides. Oh. Like the cops sit there and like run speed traps. Yeah. Well, you pass one of those little median crossover points and there is a, uh, a, a cop car of some kind in that median. And as your convoy passes by, 
the the, the ranger this isn't, this isn't kpd this is a synthetic chem cop uh the lights wee 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 and he pulls out behind the convoy the and, he, and he demands that you guys pull the convoy over i mean okay okay all right now i roll 1d4 oh boy this could be very good or very bad depends well all right I rolled the worst option. Amazing. Oh, great. Uh, so, the cop uh, pulls over, and you guys, I assume, also pull over in this big convoy. Um, and this is a synthetic chem ranger service uh, cop. And these guys are synthetic chems equivalent to the KPD, because they own yeah. like almost all of Lone Star. Um, and, like the, and they also sponsor the estates quite heavily. And uh, these guys are equivalent to the Texas Rangers. They are military police. They're they're uh. they're loaded for bear. These guys are meant to fight the Barranderos, like one versus ten. <laughs> these guys are uh, <laughs> like inquisitors. <laughs> they're they mean business. Jeez. Uh, so this guy, you know, gets out of his like big, like as cop SUV, you know, off road SUV. And he, you know, his boots clacking against the hyperway plastic alloy asphalt, and uh, his keys jingling. And he and he walks out and he gets on his radio and like his PSPA system on the roof of his car. He's got one too. <laughs> You're not special. And oh, he, uh, damn it! I really thought it was so so special. <laughs> yeah, and he's and he's like he, he gets on his little ham radio PA system, and he's like, this is. Uh, uh, the, the, the ranger for the, the synthetic cam ranger services, uh, in order to prevent continued drug smuggling and human trafficked operations conducted by criminal elements in the county, uh, I'm gonna have to search your vehicles. I immediately call up Dapper. Dapper. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, uh -oh. Dapper. Pick up that Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right, so you you call Dapper, um, and it would be like it would be like the middle of the night to account for time zones at this point. <laughs> It'd be like two or three hours uh, uh, ahead at this point. Um, so he you know picks up and he's like, oh, yes, what, 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 what's 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 the matter? I have a major problem, Dapper. With one. I, I'm sorry that I interrupted your sleep. Two. <clears throat> uh, we recently got pulled over. I mean, recently, I mean, like, right now, by Synthetic Chem's sheriff. Uh, and he wants to sh check all the vehicles to see if we're smuggling drugs or not. Well. I mean. Yeah. You've got two options, my friend. Convince him not to look in our trailer, or kill him. I mean, I have I... a flammability for this. Oh my god, are you... <laughs> I, I, uh... I have a flammability. And Bonus also has one, so... I don't know, I don't know if he's used it. Oh, that's right. Only once yeah, per has week. It, it has it, I don't week. think it is. Well, he's getting yeah. a jail card once a month. <laughs> oh! so, yeah, that one... Yeah, that's, that's powerful. I'm, yes. I'm gonna the uh, <laughs> nervous chuckle. I'm gonna I'm gonna <laughs> say to that I'm like, well what what's a convincing argument for a state trooper that you cannot under no circumstance open up this the trunk at least. I don't know. I, mean, uh, I can tell him that uh, I mean unless he's got any proof that we're working for him and not Aztec. I mean, I mean look, he could I'm gonna be he honest. He can employ us under his business, like the soup company. But what? I don't think that would be enough. The, the, these types are um, determined, buggers. Yeah, I'm gonna. I can't really be like. No, nah, I don't think you understand. Like, we open this up. Fuck, that would make it more suspicious. It'd be like, no, we can't open this up. Contractor says type of deal like oh, we, if we open it up we we ain't getting paid is gonna be contaminated just cannot the news gonna go off well, you know who knows that's what i was gonna say is uh if we open it it'll get contaminated 
Yeah, and you guys can concoct whatever, whatever line you want, but he's he's blocking up. Um, who who's is it? Wade in the back of the convoy. Uh, I think. Wait, it's between Oid and and Bonus. I guess I'll say I'll say, I'll say Oid's in the back because Bonus's car is full of weapons, <laughs> <laughs> and none of them are legal. So yikes! You know, let's just kind of keep Wait. that keep that a little bit uh, on the back burner. Um, so this this ranger walks up to um, Oid's uh, window and like ding 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 ding. Knocks on it. All right. It also uh, has a giant, like, metal dog in the back, and a robot ninja body. Yeah, and like a massive machine gun on the roof. But this guy does not seem scared at all. <laughs> of course. You have a picture for this guy? No, sadly, I don't. <laughs> is he uh, wearing a wide shirt. brim Yankee? Very specific. Or he, the all -brim he has, Yankee? he has, uh, like one of those wide brim sheriff department caps. Like a, the beige oh boy, oh boy. caps, <laughs> and he does have like a, a cool, like holographic, uh, sheriff's badge that projects his name and badge number as a hologram. Man, I don't really want to kill this guy, but I cannot open this. Seeing oh. as we're also going to be delivering shit to Synthetic M. <laughs> I mean, I can, like I said, I've got Aura of Glory. This guy's knocking on a weird window. I mean, uh, I'll open up, you know, talk to him, maybe stall some time while you guys figure out what the hell we're gonna do. Alright, you lower the window, and the, the, the sheriff, the ranger rather, like, leans down a little bit, peeks his head in, his aviator glasses on. Cause of course, every... State policeman has a music <laughs> glasses, as we all know. Um, he beaks his head in, and he's like, "All right, there, Sonny. Um, am, I, am I gonna be allowed to see your registration and uh, look in the back of these here vehicles, or am I gonna have to get some backup?" Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll pop out of my car. Okay, so as soon as you crack your door open, he looks over like down the whole convoy, like a you know, like a full quick pan zoom in. Uh, to Cairo's face, and the ranger just like, stay in your vehicle, sir. Hold on, I've got some explaining to do. His hand has gone. Stay in your car, sir. I'm gonna have my hands out the window. God. Now I'm the leader of this convoy. I'm also the leader of this team. Bonus laughs to himself. <laughs> we all laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Maria Jr. last. She's the boss around here. You all know it. We have a kid. She's not afraid to shoot. <laughs> she has a 44. Don't go near her. <laughs> Officer, please We're save us. She's hostage. holding us hostage. <laughs> Officer, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Cairo. Let's, let's see what she got. All right. So I'll have my hands out of the window. Uh, and I'll explain from my car that there are some extenuating circumstances around one of the vehicles. Uh, and he's like, oh yes, please, please, regale me with whatever cock me me story you smuggler boys happen to come up with this week. Now, I'll say this, I'm going to get out of my car slowly, my weapons are holstered and in the car and unloaded. Uh, and and he's like, you will do no such thing. I will come to you. All uh, right, very well. I'll slowly sit back in my car and close the door. Uh, and he keeps his hand on his gun, um, and he like slowly walks over down the line, up the length of this convoy, to Cairo's uh, car at the front. I um, mean, I think it's like halfway. Um, he like taps like a, a, a like wrist, you know, gauntlet. Um, and from his truck, two, like, little drones, like, choo -choo, get launched from the back and, like, unfold in midair. And they have, like, little, like, rotors on them. And they kind of... Yeah, that's pretty cool. They're, like, circling the convoy to keep an eye on everybody. I, as he, as he walks up to the window, I'm gonna pop Oro of Glory. Alright. 
Uh, I think that requires something. A fame check. Yeah. All right. Ooh, baby. That's a daddy. Mm. All right. That means he has to make uh, willpower at minus two, right? Yeah. Willpower at minus two or be stunned until they can succeed on the same check at the end of their successive combat turns. Check applies even if the target leaves the AoE. Targets that roll a crit fail pass out for 1d6 minutes. That's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> the user receives advantage to charisma checks against targets in that AoE, whether said targets are affected or not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so this guy just imagine walks up. the police officer passes out. <laughs> <He> just... <laughs> For no fucking reason, like, what are we supposed to do? Man, this kind of looks so weird in his body cam. <laughs> oh my god! Is that who- <laughs> And then you guys just drive away. Five minutes later, you yeah. back up, you're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say, he did almost pass out. He rolled a two. So he almost passed out. Uh, but no. Uh, so he, he just walks oh, up. No, he makes that check at a minus two. Yeah, but it's not a crit fail. Oh, uh, um, yeah, I think that's what yeah. he meant, like, negative, by he almost negative, passed like, out. penalties don't, uh, make it a decrypt. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, so he, he walks up to the window, and he just looks in there, and he's like... Explain. Alright. <clears throat> so, we are mercenaries. Currently, our job is to keep that trailer back there sealed and shut. We don't even know what's in it. If we bring it to the customer and it is opened, we lose all payment and the load is contaminated. All we know is that whatever's in there needs to stay in there. Hmm. What's now, going on? I'm going I'm to make it spicy. I'm going to make it spicy. Uh, Nox, could you make me either a perception or an intelligence check? Your choice. Uh, well, while Nox is doing that, I'll turn to him and I'll be like, Although, <laughs> you may think we're part of the Aztecs, if you check my con, we're from Rhinestown. Ryan, they're also in Rhinestown. Not they are, really. But... Not, not like they are out here. Yeah, not yet. Oh, they don't have yeah, tanks like they do down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, different, yeah. Different world. Like, if, 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 I'm sure if he also looks at our past affiliates, yeah, oh he, and he sees, like, uh, goodness. you know, Full Fuel. He's like, oh, well, you guys know the Full Fuel? It's pretty great. They're, they're pretty cool. Well, I must yeah. say, I got a 10 on int. Hmm, okay. So as, um, I mean, I don't, I, 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 I don't know if you, you hung up with Dapper. I would assume not. But No, like, I, yeah, I you're, would you're still just be like, like, <laughs> hold on, I'm gonna like hold. oh, my God, Dapper, <laughs> Cairo almost got us fucking... Dapper, please! <laughs> he, he's, he almost went out of his car. Oh my god, he, the, the sheriff passed me, and now uh, he, he's talking with Cairo. <laughs> Alright, so as as you're sitting in the, the capsule cockpit, and you're like climate-controlled, super swanky, luxury dream, dream brand 18-wheeler, <laughs> uh, you, you've got like, you know, holographic readouts and stuff that tell you like all of the truck's stats, uh, like you know, where a safe power usage is going, um, and on, and as uh, this encounter is going on, you see the power usage slowly begin to creep up, and you're like, "Hmm, I wonder why that's happening." And you like, you know, <coughs> pan through some AR screens, and you see that like the cargo container is like powering something up inside, and it's slowly using more and more of the truck's energy. Uh, Dapper, oh. and he's like, "Yes, yes, my my dear lady." Why, why, why is the nuke in the back of the truck powering up? Like, well, I can neither confirm nor deny the fact that it may or may not be a nuclear weapon. But if it's powering up, uh, that would be because, uh, 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 I mean, either you know, maybe, just maybe, someone, not saying who, uh, might be. Might might be preparing for a worst case scenario. Maybe. Hmm. Right. Is that someone perchance uh, prepping that this cargo in a container does get opened up and uh, 
said sheriff may or may not see something in there and may or may not come to an end. Perhaps. Hmm. Mm. So what you're saying is uh, I should not get out of my vehicle. If that crate gets opened, I don't think it'll help you. I, it, but sure. I don't think I, I don't think if the, the crate got open, it was ever going to help anyone. Can I make my charisma check. Uh, yes, yeah, so you can make your charisma check at advantage. At advantage. Okay, it's a good thing I got that advantage because it was a one and an eight. Leave email. <laughs> okay. Um. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Um. So do you see that the this this ranger? Um, and you're like, oh, you know, yada, yada, yada. who somehow recognizes me? <laughs> yeah, and he's like, oh, you know, whatever. Here's like our cons. You know, we're not from around here, so we're probably, you know, that should help. That we're probably not from, you know, we're not Aztec guys, and we can't open this one truck because of, you know, like, like intimidated and stuff. And yeah, I'm like we got job requirements. Um, and the rangers, the rangers, are like, mm, mm, mm. Uh, I see, I see, I see. I do, I'll I even do, have I my mask off for this encounter. <laughs> uh, and he kind of like, you know, like taps the, the side of um, near your, uh, your car, kind of like casually. Uh, and he kind of stands up straight. Uh, he looks over at the truck and he seems to like be contemplating whether or not he cares. <laughs> <laughs> because he, he believes you that, you know, you might not be an uh, Aztec or like, that, like, you know, it'll contaminate the truck. But does he care that it'll contaminate the contents of the truck? That's that's really, like... <laughs> Actually, since so I'm in the back of the convoy, uh, this cop would be in front of my car, right? But yeah, he's he's all the way at the front. Well, he's avoid, all the way at the avoid, front. Where, where Cairo's car is, yeah. Mm -hmm. How far ahead would that be? Would you say? That would be, God. What's what's the length of Bonus's car plus the the U-Haul plus the eighteen wheeler? And oh, there you go. That, gonna, that's how much. <laughs> I'm gonna throw a bargaining chip in, like a hundred and fifty <laughs> feet, probably. Pretty and I'll, I'll tell him if it's any consolation. We do have I'll someone that's there. trying to reach synthetic chem in our convoy. Mm, I'm not sure you could have brought that up. Well. Well, it's done now, I guess. All done. Sadly said. Uh, and uh, uh, the ranger just kind of like, you know, keeps like, taps his chin and his like big... Texan mustache and um like well everybody around these parts is working for either synthetic cam the estates or the Aztecs so <coughs> that doesn't help you real much unless, I've, unless you've got some kind of formal agreement paperwork I can I can see that can't uh... rate that Oh, from the doctor, he needs the paperwork. Well, she doesn't have I any. Mean, she doesn't have any. You, no. you, you guys didn't stay in New Orleans long enough for her to talk to synthetic him. So yeah, it was, she, she was gonna has make no paperwork here. that she's making to do with the synthetic him yet. Yeah, this is, this is why I said you shouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> yeah. Mm. He, and he's like looking at you and you don't say anything and he's like, so that's a no then. All right. Oh, she doesn't have paperwork. She wasn't able to contact synthetic him at the time. At the time, I don't think he had to leave the location. Making anything haste. better? No. Yeah, he he just, just looks at you just, and uh, he he's not convinced. <laughs> by, by Can I make this. a luck check here? For what? What what is luck gonna declare here? The only thing I've got is fucking charisma. Either so, either we're failing this fucking side quest to get to Vegas, or we're getting arrested. What does everybody fucking want here? I'm trying my ass off. 
I mean, I appreciate that we're trying to take the non-violent option. However, I do have a very large you don't gun. You want to fucking right. shoot him? What? I'm saving that option. I'm not gonna shoot him. I don't think anyone has to shoot him right now. All right, then we're gonna fail the side quest. Huh? He hasn't decided to look yet. He's debating oh, on it. Yeah. Then we're in a waiting game. He's debating. So while he's debating, does anybody, does anybody else want to take any further actions? Uh, <sighs> I just want to make sure the gun is ready to fire. <clears throat> Alright, and you can, you know, pull up the, uh, the rotary cannon controls. Can't spin the gun up because that would be uh, like really obvious. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm not gonna like <laughs> behind him, but I just want to make sure. You're like, oh, awfully fancy gun you got there. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Nox, do you have anything you want to do while you're playing this waiting game? Um. I will simply ask that the doctor be talking to Synthetic Kim right fucking now. Okay. So, hey, hey, doc. Hey, you want her just like <laughs> on their on public the email call right now? Be like, hey, I need paper. Be like, hey, hey, doc, do me a favor, all right? You know how you wanted to go to Synthetic Kim, yada 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 yada, right, right, right. Uh, make the plea right now. Get the paperwork right now. I somehow doubt that it's gonna work, but I guess it doesn't hurt to try. I mean, yeah, I can I can roll some some checks for the doctor see if she can somehow pull together uh, like any kind of of official statement or something that she's working for them. Uh, so you gotta be really convincing, you know, the whole like. <laughs> yeah, <please. laughs> I'm right. just imagining some like some Betty Kim suit, like you know, pulling up in his voicemail. He just got any messages like, please. <laughs> <laughs> Give, fax me your paperwork, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, God, I don't know if I want to, cause I think the real border to entry for her for this for this con convincing plan of hers. Is whether or not she would like already know somebody in Synthetic Chem that she could have like she was she had already kind of vaguely well, started the negotiations with so she I knows thought, like a guy like you guys know Xanthorp she knows somebody in Synthetic Chem. I you thought she like, would have oh. if she said she was going to make a plea to them. Well, that doesn't mean that she knew somebody. It just means that she knows I mean, she'll be interested. I have two contact points. <laughs> you make him your well, contact. <laughs> well, with Synthetic Kim. I mean, you guys know Dante Riddle, and he used to work for Synthetic Kim, so there's that. Oh, this is true. Um, but I think... Uh, uh, I, I was, I was gonna give her... I was gonna give her... I'm gonna give her five D10. If she passes three of the five, we're good. And she's okay. frantically making lots and lots and lots and lots of phone calls and, like, emails and texts. Wow, what a mixed bag. Okay. Oh, boy. We got a seven. Let's pass. We got a five. That's also a pass. Let me find her sheet so I know what these middling numbers are. She got a charisma of six. Okay, that's good. Uh, seven, pass. Five, pass. One, two fails. Ten, two passes. And a four, which is a pass. So, but let's get into for two. Just barely. She succeeds. Um, she's like, she got like two cell phones and one in each hand, and she's just like calling people frantically, being like, I, uh, please fax me your paperwork right now. Um, and eventually, um, God, how do I, I had, I had an idea in mind and I've forgotten it. Um, okay, yeah, so she, she, uh, sub vocals. Well, she doesn't have some logo. She just texts all of you, um, and it's like I at least have like a guy 
that can be used as like a referral number for this cop to check and, and make uh, sure that like we're what in is the it? proceedings. <laughs> Uh, and she she sends sends you over, like you know the the digital business card of this synthetic chem executive. I'll turn to the cop and be like, "Well, we may not have the paperwork, but we've got a referral number, so you can check um, and ensure that everything is in the process." Uh, and and you like, I assume you sent him the information. Yeah. Um, and he looks it over in AR. And he's like, I'm going to run this on my computer. Stay right here. And then he Not going ka-ching, anywhere. Ka-ching, 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 walks back to his, uh, to his, to his SUV. Um, he gets into his SUV, and you assume he runs some numbers, checks that this ID isn't, like, fake, because that's as he, he's assuming you guys are, are pulling a fake ID out of your butt uh, at this point. So he's, you know, calling the number, emailing the email, making sure that it's the same person he's talking to. Um... Back in the capsule cockpit, uh, Nox, you see that the power usage has, like, topped out on the, um, the cargo container. Like, you know, whatever is, whatever process was being conducted is now, like, either finished or is in full swing. Um, I, 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 um, to definitely, like, um, you, you, you can stop now. And he, and he, like, turns to, like, the face cam camera, FaceTime camera, and he's like, can I? At, <laughs> I yeah, I said you can. Can uh, I? I'd say uh, um, the truck. Well, Dapper, well, no, the truck would have been off. Why would I keep it running? Yeah, like, the, the at least the engine. hooked up to the yeah. car, to the SUV, to the truck, my God. Mm-hmm. To the coupe, so, I imagine st- stuff. I imagine stuff still runs. Yeah, I yeah. imagine it's out of my control, regardless. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I go, it's like, yes, y- yes, you can. I think we may have convinced this sheriff that uh, we're not smugglers, at least the one he's looking for. Uh, and he's like, well, in that case, I'll be sure to let the person in responsible for uh, potentially activating certain wake-up procedures. That nuke, you know. And, uh, yeah. you know... I'll uh, let them know that they can stop that, but it'll it might yeah, take yeah. a while. If you hear any strange noises, or uh, feel I didn't anything hear weird, anything. Yeah, just ignore it. I didn't hear anything. Don't worry, Dapper. I'll. Uh, I, I don't know. I'll like uh, buy you a drink and give you a handy or some shit. I don't know. Well, yes, yes. I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to let the uh, the people know not to do that anymore. And he like you see, you see him like turn away from the camera and he's like, hey. Turn it off. Yes. Yes, yes, that one. Great. And then, you know, uh, you see the the energy usage uh, increase a little bit more. <laughs> There's I mean, something's gotta, going on. You, know, you gotta take it off. To, you know, you gotta, you gotta do something to... to you try it. turning on and off again. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I can't control it. The reactor's melting down. And then, like, you know, Dex gets reduced to glass. Oh! <laughs> like an ion nuke goes off. We yeah, are the type of smugglers. Yeah. <laughs> Wrong kind of smuggler. Whoa. And then uh, I'd go and be like, "Well, uh, have a have a have a good rest, Dapper, and um, see you when we get there eventually." Tony who? And then he hangs up. Um, and you you do feel like some jolting, like rocking, coming from the back of the cargo container. Hmm. Yeah, I just, I just like, say this to myself, I'm like, Jesus. I didn't know nukes can walk now. Yeah, and you, and you hear, like, boom, 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 boom. And then, like, the power usage goes up a little bit more, and you hear, like, lightning crackling. <laughs> what the fuck? Like Jesus Christ! Like the the you know the ship the ship the truck shakes a little bit more, um, and then it like stops, and the power usage slowly begins to go back down. I'm like, oh, 
I'm assuming we. My heart. <laughs> I'm assuming I could have seen this through my rear view. Yeah, yeah you, mean, you guys can see like I'm the the car sure container everyone... like wiggling a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you were paying attention, you'd be like, "What the fuck?" Um. But I'm just I'm just gonna look at it and be like, "Woo!" Nuclear detonation avoided. Some fucking nuke. Yeah, weird nuke. Yeah. Maybe it's like a hyper intelligent sex bot nuke. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> For sure. Definitely. That's the answer. <laughs> that's, oh, yeah. that's what we tell the officer. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Officer, do not go in there. She will kill you by snooze too. Okay? Do not. You don't want it. Please. <laughs> Please. Don't take off the chastity lock, whatever you do. She will God, strangle you to death with eyes. Like a watermelon officer. <laughs> like a watermelon. Uh, but yeah, eventually, like, you know, 10, 15 minutes go by, and uh, the officer does come back uh, out of his car, and he saunters back up to Cairo. Um, and like, all right. Looks like it checks out just barely. But, but, if I see that cargo container wiggle one more time, You know, and he just starts like backing up, without breaking eye contact. It's like you know, you know, understood. You know, <laughs> you know. The whole time, <laughs> the whole time, he's walking back to his car. He's just pointing at you. <laughs> you know. uh, and then eventually, he gets in his into his uh, SUV. Um, Still saying you know. Yeah, and he gets over the PI. He's like. You know, <laughs> like also you can pull away now, but you know. <laughs> I do just that. I start to pull away. And I, I clear my throat and I go, Jesus Christ, man, they must be bored out of their minds to stop people from a speed trap. On a road that has no speed limit. <laughs> exactly. That has no. Speed limit. I mean, he didn't pull you guys over because you were speeding, though. So you know. No, I know he didn't. He it was like a traffic stop, you know. Yeah, random, random check. You know how it is. Cost yeah, it's it's one of that. those things where it's like, officer, you have no right to pull me over. It's like, yeah, but it literally states I can randomly pull someone over. You know, I'm the police officer. You know, from the law. <laughs> no, I think, I think in case you're in case you're okay for if you were to be like, officer, you have no right to pull me over, they'd shoot you in the face. <laughs> They'd be like, ah, "This is the Stop hyper resisting. way." Stop <laughs> resisting! Don't. God, keep your the German K four. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, the K fourth Reich. <laughs> Curse. Hell yeah! And then yeah. we pull away, and then uh, I I uh, I sub to to bonus. I go. Tell me, were you aiming something at him? Uh, and he's like, hmm, no. He's always aiming something. I'm like, no, no, but, uh, Oid was. Yeah, I, no, I know Oid was. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, that was fine. I was just wondering if you were. No, 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 not well, me? No, no never. I, no, no. I give my gun yeah, to Maria. I, I think... <laughs> well, how, how's... <laughs> Your, uh, how do I put this? How's how's your company there? Are they riding fine? Um, and he's like, uh, oh, how would he how would he word this? Uh, he would say something to the effect of, like, um, I I don't miss this age when I had my kids. <laughs> how many times has she said, "Are we there yet?" Um, and he's like, oh, I had, uh, I had my, my, my car's computer track it. Uh, and he sends you just like a triple digit number. Huh. All right. Well, um, g good luck, I guess. And, uh, <laughs> You're in the background. Yeah. Are we there yet? Uh, and then he hangs <laughs> up. <laughs> 
then we're on our way. Alright. You guys. Down, 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 down. Having narrowly avoided a brush with the law. And possibly death. And possibly death. I mean, death. I don't know about the death part, but definitely the law. Possibly death. It's me, Otto Craft. <laughs> Man, I'm back. Now I'm thinking if we uh, went to the Aztec people by the pit, because uh, Aztec pit people are different. Um, what would have happened? It's like, oh, drugs? We could sell this. And then he's like, I smell Aztec. <laughs> I smell synth coke. Something wrong, my god. And then he just gets gunned down. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, cool. Well, that was nearly avoided. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I'm, I'm wondering. Do we want to do another random encounter or get to Lone Star? Uh... You have um, anything planned in Lone Star? I do. I have the main mission. Mostly planned. Kind of planned. Semi-planned. Why did downgrade? <laughs> you talked about it more. <laughs> <laughs> it's a plan. There I are words on a page that describe that mission, yes. I see, I see. There's only well, brackets, you... but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, do you even have the mission name? Hold on, let me check. I don't. But the rest I of think... them are kind of, not really. Yeah, not I, th I think uh, the intro is there. random encounter might might save us some time. You know? I mean, you know, I can do the I can intro. Because there's like an arc that I get it done anyway. Like, finish it now. So. Yeah, true, true, true. I can, like, intro it if you guys would prefer. No, well, we still... We have like a few things to do in Lone Star. We gotta drop off the kids. Uh, Four. Then drop off the doctor. Uh, and then do do whatever you want us to do. Yeah. Okay. I, yes, I think that can... I think that should fill up the time. Yeah. All right. So you guys drive the remaining few hours late into the evening with nothing of any real note, or at least nothing you guys stop for. Uh, you, you might notice a couple more duffel bags, but you don't take your chances anymore. Uh, we can only, you know, kill so many husbands. Yeah, you can only, only no, shoot honestly. so many Marios. Mm -hmm. He only has so many one-up mushrooms, you know? <laughs> the same <laughs> Mario comes <laughs> back? Like, no. Mario, if I knew you, he's gonna come back and, like, kill you guys. Epic. I mean, buddy, you're, you're part I mean, of the honestly, tree. Your family's in love I knew you. You can make it like a relative or something, you know? We gotta up our count. One Mario, one Luigi. <laughs> Going after the whole kingdom. The whole clan. They have like a... a Mario, a Luigi. Toad. Yeah. Toad. So nice Toadette. for the princess to invite us over for a picnic, eh, Luigi? <laughs> <laughs> Yahoo! I love sp <laughs> I love the money. That's spaghetti. Cool. All right. Well, this lovely entrance into Lone Star. Yeah. So you guys enter into the super city of Lone Star, and then it's like the the Borderlands intro with like the, you know, and like the big bold letters mm -hmm. that like the Wild West letters hover above the horizon. Lone Star. Like a gunshot goes off in the distance. A cat dies. <laughs> Real. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> And uh, you guys make it into Lone Star, which must be spoken in a cowboy accent. No Lone excuses. Star. Lone Star. And, Massive uh, city effect. Where you say Lone Star, <laughs> it's always said Lone Star. Lone Star. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter if you have a southern drawl. Yeah, it's always you say it in a southern drawl. Yeah. If you if you don't use a southern drawl, people won't know what you're talking about. Like, oh yeah, I'm in Lone Star. Like, where? What are you talking about, city boy? I'm sorry, what? Yellow belly. Hey, witchcraft you talking about? Who's loaning the star to who? Uh, no, nah, no, nah, boy, you in Lone Star. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, of course. Uh, but yeah, so you guys get into Lone Star. Uh, and the, the border control for Lone Star is pretty strict. Uh, not quite as strict as New Orleans, where it's like almost illegal for you to leave if you are a citizen of the super city. Um, 
but getting in is very difficult because they are, of course, trying to cut down on organized criminals getting into the city. Yeah, a really good thing we aren't organized <coughs> criminals, <laughs> oh, yeah, right? For sure, for sure, for sure. Not like, Couldn't be me. you know, half of you don't have some kind of... I mean, Bonus has ties to almost every criminal organization on the planet <laughs> at this point. Every Us major group. Having, having criminal records... I don't, I don't think Bullet has been arrested. Maybe he has. I haven't decided that yet. Um, but. An arrest record? What's that? Uh, but yeah, you guys uh, <laughs> get into the city after waiting a long time to get inside. Because, of course, your paperwork does check out. They search the vehicles that are allowed to be searched. Because, um, you know, Dapper does still have, like, the, the basic, like, corporate seal on it that the rangers don't have to abide by <laughs> but trade regulations require that the uh border the wall cops do. Do. yeah because these are kpd guys that, that guard the wall mm. um, and they are easily bribed <laughs> in that first case <laughs> so you guys get into lone star and lone star is um basically like ryan's town but like in the desert oh like it's it's again I haven't decided how quite how big I want Lone Star to be because if I do go with my original plan and have Lone Star be uh, both uh, Houston and Austin combined that would make the city like several thousand square miles <laughs> in I mean, uh, hey, the area Texas several thousand square miles I mean yeah but like several thousand square miles bro it would take it would it would take you guys literally it would, it would rival Ryan's town in size at that point. It would be it would take you like over a day to get from one end to the Evan other. Evan Ryan's town. Yeah, like Ryan's town is the biggest city on the planet. And uh, if if I were to go with a bigger Lone Star estimate, Lone Star estimate, uh, then it would it would rival Ryan's town. So it's pretty big. Um, it is more spread out. It's not quite as tall as Ryan's town is. Um, there are still some plenty of skyscrapers and stuff like that. Plenty of sky lanes for for Bonus to uh, yeah. fly around and have a jolly good old time up there. Um, let's see what, what what kind of preliminary information. Um, it is uh, sat in the middle of swamps, forests, bayous, rivers, lakes, and drylands, um, and surrounded by like a man-made desert because of all of the pollution and, and urbanization has kind of killed everything around it. Um, but because it is so big, Lone Star, uh, Lone Star does uh, border the Gulf of Mexico, kind of like how New Orleans does, uh, except that Lone Star isn't like half flooded <laughs> like New Orleans is. Huh. So Lone Star is just like objectively superior to New Orleans. Um, kind of figured. Yeah. Uh, but more than anything, I think even like aesthetic, even though aesthetically it's pretty similar to Ryanstown, minus the dudes in like cowboy outfits, um, and everybody's carrying a gun, well, even more than Atlanta, uh, the culture of Lone Star is very different from Ryanstown, especially the mercenary culture, because Lone Star, Lone Star, is where like all of the estates go to sell their goods. And, you know, Syneticam is headquartered out of Lone Star. So the super city is surrounded by thousands and thousands and thousands of miles of farm fields and estates uh, that sprawl outwards. And, you know, grow Syneticam's tonnages of product to be turned into synth fuel. Um, so, like, you don't see as many, nearly as many KE advertisements or KPD soldiers walking around as you do synthetic cam advertisements, synthetic cam subsidiaries. Um, the main radio station and TV station and news stations here are all synthetic cam owned. Um, the cops are mostly uh, ranger service. Uh, mm. You know, more of the sheriffs that you guys dealt with, but not like the, the guys on the outside of Super City are like the frontiersmen. They're the real, real deal. The guys inside are kind of just like knockoff KPD. Uh, with like a southern accent and a cowboy aesthetic mm. um, otherwise roughly equivalent um, so yeah you guys arrive into Lone Star Lone Star um, 
you know, later later in the evening, probably around dinner time, give or take six ish. Um, I mean, Lone Star is a pretty nice city, all things considered, IRL and uh, NK4. So, you know, the crime rate's not super high. It's not always rainy like it is in Ryanstown. You guys can find a decent place to stay for relatively cheap if you so desire. That would be nice. All right. So I will say 75 colors per person per night. Bada bing, bada boom. Um, but I will say that Maria and Maria Jr. immediately, um, you know, give give a Take phone call. Leave. Yeah, to like their, you know, relatives or whatever that they said lived in Lone Star. And they go and stay with their relatives, or like aunt or whatever, or, you know, Maria Jr.'s grandparents uh, at their place. And I, I mean, honestly, at this point, it might, it might be so funny if I was like, oh yeah, Maria, Maria's family like owns an estate or something and is like stupidly rich, uh, but that would be too convenient, so no. <laughs> um, but yeah, so you guys can get yourselves some stuff. Uh, <coughs> I have to rise to attract your money. So. After you guys go to your hotel and have a nice sleep and or recharge, depending on your species, um, you all wake on up. Um, I'm doing math. Hold on. Wait, this is. Oh, that's right. Um, so yeah, what do you guys? What do you guys go first? Are you gonna deal with? Because uh, right, yes, you guys wake up, and I think it's everybody gets a text message. I don't think it's only Knox, but I'm going to do the check. What? Mm. Oh, that's not right. What about this check? Uh, I am looking at my notes. All right, so you guys wake up, and you all have a text from none other than the Hermes Johnson. Oh. You mean the Hermes Johnson? The Hermes Johnson. The one, the only, the one Hermes and only Johnson? Johnson named Johnson. Yes, the. So Hermes I text back, you know, the Hermes Johnson, otherwise labeled as my phone as Daddy Z. Um, He's just Johnson in my phone. <laughs> Well, clearly you don't get close to your contacts. Oh my god. Well, no, Sorry. I know Xanthor's name. I know Xanthor's name. I just call him Johnson. Yeah, everybody does, apparently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... What was it say? Uh, it says... Uh, yo, 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 my mercenary bros and broette. Uh, Dapper tells me that you guys are in Lone Star and uh, just wanted to let you know that I've got some folks down there looking for some hired assistants that might be up your proverbial alley. Uh, ex elaborate. When I see this message, I think I text it back. Who are you? What have you done? <laughs> you know, Xanthor. I think the same thing too. I'm like, who the Xanthor doesn't enter. Uh, has mean, Vegas changed him? Xanthor, if Xanthor talks, however, I, the DM, decides that Xanthor talks. On this particular well, what have you done with Xanthor? Uh, I have replaced him. It's me, Andrew Oid 2.0. <laughs> oh no! my god. You never Not told me you had a brother. Two. Not Oid 2. Oh no, now there are two of them. Oid 2. <laughs> I can't this tell the, the difference. Now there are two of them. Yeah, so, um... Alright, yeah. well, this hip Vegas Xanthorpe. Yeah, well, the, yeah. the, the Vegas trip's really got into his head. 
man, he's gonna spend like three weeks in, in Vegas. He's like, guys, <laughs> yes, I'm gonna all the casinos. He's gonna I... drop like three tax brackets just losing money and gambling. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he's lucky enough and he gains half a tax bracket. <laughs> I don't know, well, bro. by the time you guys got here, I broke even, so... <laughs> Just barely. Honestly, this should be a thing you roll for, like, stocks every session. Like, how much money has a Santo gained or lost in gambling? Honestly, I'm gonna start doing this. Purely multiple percentile dice. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start like, doing Guys, it. you don't understand, I gambled away all of Hermes' stock. <laughs> So what do you mean? Oh, Las Vegas owns Hermes now. <laughs> I gambled away my shares. I no longer have a job, guys. I can't pay you. <laughs> uh, I gotta change your name in my phone now to just Johnson now. <laughs> no more Hermes. Only Johnson. You no longer gain the right to be called Xanther if you are now just Johnson. You no longer gain the right to this ass! Alright. Well. You're poor, uninterested. <laughs> Sorry, I don't let poor people have a chance at this. Well, it's true though. Wow, well, so you you tell me you would you wouldn't have let Auto Craft hit that <laughs> one last <No>. time. <laughs> <laughs> you could even rent it like... all times. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a like that's like a bone down for between friends, you know. I just met you, and you're poor. You don't know that. I'm you're, gonna let the bros hit it. <laughs> hey, he used to be famous, all right. He's got to have something to stack. Yeah, man. Yeah. He's got some some ducats still. I mean, not <laughs> anymore. <laughs> well, you I mean yeah, he's dead now. But... <laughs> exactly. Right. So, uh, what do we want to know? We want to know um what the more about of these this yeah, job yeah, yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Hermes, the company, uh, declares loudly in public in front of you guys that uh, Xanthorp, the man, the man, the myth, legend himself, has uh, some old friends. And by old friends, you assume he means not old friends. <laughs> yes, um, as always. But he has people whom he knows and is are vaguely, you know, he's, he's vaguely friendly with them. Uh, if in a state family, uh, the Sharps, the Sharp family, uh, and that that the, the uh, new patriarch of the Sharp family, uh, uh, one Edwin Sharp, reached out to him, uh, asking if he knew any good marks around Lone Star, Lone Star, uh, because. Um, the Sharp family is in need of a yob. A yob. Many people for a yob. I can't afford a yob. A yob. A yob. Yeah. And uh, uh, Xanthorp tells you guys that if you are interested in said yob, uh, you should mosey on down to a local uh, fancy <laughs> restaurant in downtown Nostar, where. Uh, Mr. Edwin will meet you guys and discuss said yob. Um, can 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 you give us some time? Uh, I mean, he's gonna be there like the afternoon, so you know. All right, then. Like, I guess if we don't have everything settled out with like you know these two, then one of us can go. A two. For all of us, we can even bring the kid. Well, they're already going to family. Yeah, they're oh wait, gone. they're gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Worry about about remove them from the initiative tracker. They are gone. Uh, okay. Well, I would have. Yeah, we missed our chance. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> okay. I wanted to see, you know, your junior skills in a shootout. <laughs> I want an honorable duel. <laughs> But yeah, so like, yeah, just the doctor, I guess, uh, is what we need to worry about. Okay, cool. So, you said what around noon? Yeah, around 
Yeah. yeah. So I thought you said like a lunch date. Yeah, sure. I'll go on a lunch date with this guy. Wow, I can't believe you're cheating on Xanthrop and Faith and Bonus with this guy. Well, one, all right, it's not cheating. It's called a polyamorous open relationship. Two, if anything, I'm cucking the patriarch. Unless you want some action, too, then, you know. I mean, hey, I could go for some. Oh, all right. So, if we really want, me me and Oid will be on this lunch date, and you two can go with the doctor. I mean, okay. All right, cool. Uh, I figured that would be the first um, matter of business. Guess what? Getting the doctor stuff doctor figured stuff out. Through? Like, oh morning. no, yeah, that is the first matter of business. But I don't know how long it's gonna take. You know, I, I, mean, I don't know about you. If you guys are gonna accompany her or not? Because if you're not, if you're gonna be like, all right, lady, have a have a good time. What? No, of course we're gonna come to here. How are we gonna secure the? But we secured the dough. I mean, you know, I don't know. That's you problem. <laughs> That's exactly why yeah, we're we need to receive here. payment, and we can't chance her not paying us. Yeah, or else it will be her worst nightmare. Incorrect. <laughs> you get My worst nightmare from, from Lone Star. <laughs> it was like worth it. She didn't pay us. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, that is true. If she doesn't pay us, there's gonna be some issues. Alright, cool. Well, anyway, um. Yeah, so I guess uh, we can split the group however you care to. Yeah, sure, we'll do that. Right, so well, it also depends things? on how long that takes. Well, yeah, that would have been done in the morning. Okay. Um, so yeah, you guys can head over to the corporate district. Um, and since you're all listed as Dr. Vanderhouse's security, effectively, um, Synthetic Chem <coughs> lets you all in under visitor passes. Uh, and you are brought into Synthetic Chem HQ. Mm. And Synthetic Chem HQ, this is the first headquarters building that any of you have ever been in, except for Bonus, uh, who's been in KE's HQ. Uh, but, you know, Rusty is a severe situation first. So sure is. Yeah. Um, and the Synthetic Chem uh, HQ building is as thick as a city block, if not bigger. And is a massive skyscraper that dominates the skyline of Lone Star, uh, competing in size with KE's branch building, which seems to be only as big as Lone Star's building, not Lone Star's, but as, as big as building, uh, to kind of, you know, keep up the competition. Uh, hmm. As, you know, petty as corporations can be. Every time one building gets bigger, the other gets bigger. Yeah, yeah, they kind of keep adding floors arbitrarily. Um... <laughs> So this building is like... Don't even do anything? Yeah, yeah, just empty, empty space. They just keep making the antenna bigger <laughs> on the top. It's a mm. space needle now. Uh, but yeah, so this building is easy, approaching 200 stories. Like, it is huge. It's Jesus. bigger than the Empire State Building. Uh, and um, you guys uh, enter into, you know, like this massive... Because there's like the city block-sized actual building... And then the entire several block area around the headquarter building has a smaller wall and another bunch of military checkpoints to get inside because this whole property is like a giant arcology. Huh. Because, you know, all of Chem's highest ranking employees live here and work in the HQ building. So nobody that works in this building leaves the corporate district. They're all cordoned off here permanently. Um, and they're called live-in employees. Uh, and, you know, so you guys pass through, like, effectively like a city within a city to get to the, you know, the place. And, um, you guys get into the building, get into the massive reception area that's probably, like, bigger than most apartment buildings you guys have ever been in, period. Uh, there's probably, like, enough seating and reception areas and secretary desks in here to, like, organize a small army. It is obscene how oversized and, and like, 
You know how like airports have like, those winding mazes of like velvet ropes to cordon off lines? That's how this place is. There's like dozens of these Jeez, desks with all of these I different lines. Yeah, they're, they're all so super arbitrary, like super squiggly, and like you know, like switch back on themselves a bajillion times. And um, there are security cameras everywhere. There are armed guards everywhere. There are drones everywhere, flying drones, hover drones, all of it. There are helicopters doing patrols overhead with spotlights and, wh and whatever else you can assume, kind of you know, infrared EM vision. When you guys pass through security checkpoints, they scan you for weaponry. They check your weaponry. They check your cons. They check your clothes. They check your buttholes, maybe. Everything. Just to make sure that you guys aren't going to do anything untoward. Hmm. Um, and, you know, just to get in the building. And it's like an airport in here. There's just tons of people. Either They're filling worse out than forms. An airport. <laughs> yeah, there's people filling out forms. There's like executives clocking in for work. There are people that are trying to get interviews. There's, you know, and like the ceiling is like. 50, 50, 100 feet high. Like, it's this massive vaulted ceiling in here. And there's, like, like the, 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 probably the most impressive feature in here is that against, like, the, what you assume is, like, around the middle of this huge building, or this huge floor of this building, um, around the which most of the desks are kind of, like, squared around. In the middle of this huge like bureauc bureaucratic receptionist zone um, is what looks like a gigantic like geyser of oil and I'm talking huh, it goes a hundred feet up and it's probably as like wide as like bonus's hover car this massive waterfall or like, like a chocolate fountain of oil that just like streams down these like obsidian like, black just, stone like just crenellations. Straight crude. Yeah, straight crude oil. Because since Syntheticim is an oil company, <laughs> they are the huh. oil company. Um, and they just have this massive fountain of of uh, of, of crude oil. Just well, and good real crude oil is, from, ex is exceptionally rare. We are real crude oil. Is, is worth more than, like, gold. Well, good to know where it comes from, I guess. Yeah. Um, and you guys, like, walk in, and as soon as... Like, as soon as you guys walk in, uh, a swarm of execs, like, approach the doctor, and, like, and, like, begin, like, overloading her with just, like stuff to do and things and fill out and like people to talk to and stuff to do and calling and faxing and please and like you know all that kind of stuff and um she's like <laughs> freaking out having an aneurysm um and then like you know bonus uh like kind of like shoes them all away for a second and he likes us helping her with paperwork because <laughs> he used to be a lawyer a corporate lawyer he knows how to do that kind of stuff um she like thanks him um and the assistants kind of like shuffle you guys off uh, to like one of the, the secretary desks um, and it kind of like lowers into the floor and you're led past like through the, the security, you know, through the, the receptionist desks and then like the, the big fountain of crude oil that's like flowing, you see now you're behind the desk, you can see it flows from the top of the ceiling like a full hundred feet up is the top of this massive fountain and it like oozes down from like the different tiered layers in this big like domed cylinder of, of, of crude oil and as you guys walk up and it kind of collects in this huge pool that surrounds the actual fountain that kind of and then it flows uh, back down, yeah like it's back recycled up. yeah <laughs> um, and as you guys uh, approach a bridge extends from the actual, like, this hard, like, brownish, like, sandstone or granite, you don't know, these perfectly polished and waxed granite tile floors with, like, flecks of gold and quartz in them. And this, this metal bridge extends outwards from the floor, and then when it approaches, like, where the oil is flowing down in the waterfall, the oil parts like a curtain, and an elevator is there, like a VIP elevator is behind the, the oh. curtain of oil and the bridge extends 
and the doors, this huge industrial elevator opens, and like the, this squad of executives load you all into this elevator, um, and then like the bridge retracts, the oil fountain, you know, rejoins itself, doors close, are, and you guys are sit. they like hostile about it? Not really, but they are like, Pushy. you know, they're not. Well, they, they, you know, they are like ushering you. They're like, oh, we gotta go. We gotta work the schedule to me. I gotta, I gotta get you know stuff done. God, I've been waiting all day for this. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't know. Did you come with us? Hmm? I mean, I imagine the way he's describing it is that we can do the doctor thing all together. If yeah. not. Okay, if so, just saying, we're in Willy Wonka in the gas oh. factory, in the oil factory. I mean, yeah, pretty much. God knows what kind of wacky nonsense Teddy Kim's got. Uh, Imagine that, that the, the, the elevator plays, like, country music. Is it like, like a glass oh. elevator, too, just so they can keep on staring at the damn oil fountain? No, I don't think it's, I don't think it's glass, but I do think that, like, uh, certain like some of the panels in the elevator walls are like LCDs that display like constantly scrolling ads and news feeds like doing Cyberpunk 77 and stuff, where it's constantly playing like live news feeds from Synthetic Chem's <laughs> news station, or it's playing like lively clips of a beheading video, where it's playing, you know, the, like, the oh. elevator ride is completely silent. There's like <laughs> there's a miscellaneous cough like in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just stay quiet spot, like country music playing in the background. And uh, eventually, the the elevator opens, and uh, you find yourselves in like another massive lobby. Then uh, you go through a bunch of other doors, then a bunch of other hallways <laughs> in this labyrinth of of hallways, doors, rooms, like antechambers, security checkpoints. There's like squads of soldiers marching down in rank and file. I mean, super wide, like 30, 40 feet wide hallways. And, oh, uh, I thought you said, I thought you were going to say the soldiers are super wide. They are super wide. They're not fat, they're just strong. They're built. Yeah. They're doing the, uh, the wide walking meme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, eventually, you guys are brought to. Uh, like a, a, a an executive conference room on one of the upper floors of this headquarters building, and um, you know you guys are sat down at one end of the table, and then like the squad of corporate lawyers and executives sits down on the other end of the table, and they just start like beaming the doctor with a bunch of corporate contracts and paperwork. And like legal legal statutes and all this stuff. And she's beaming all that to bonus <laughs> immediately. Um, and bonus is like reading through it and like, you know, talking with the doctor back and forth and they are, you know, negotiating stuff. Um, so I'm actually gonna roll for bonus first. See if he can actually help the doctor. He rolls. You got three, out. so no. <laughs> I was gonna uh, say that, bro. Yeah, I was like, bro, in, 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 I, mean, I guess I could give him advantage because he is like a career lawyer. But a one the second time, so yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> oh man, it, it doesn't help. It's been too, too much, long, but... it was too fast. Yeah, well, yeah. maybe I can help by you now. Being a lawyer myself, <laughs> being sure, 164th bro, sure. lawyer, <laughs> yeah, one of my many personalities is a lawyer. I mean, you know, I was just gonna. You know, Take what we have available, you know, steal one of their faces. <laughs> I mean, sure, you, you can know, like assume a, their knowledge. From that. You can do like a random synthetic chem lawyer's face. All the lawyer's faces. So that was only partially a joke. I do want to steal their face. Yeah. You can do like. Alright, so you take a face. And uh, Bonus Never is like faces. trying to, to, to parse this, you know, overly complicated uh, bureaucratic corporate legalese. Uh, and the they doctor, just overloaded it with jargon. Yeah, it's just all like. <laughs> but I think I think it's also funny because it's like written in a southern drawl for some reason. 
uh, so there's the our accent know. marks. Yeah, there's like accents so written like phonetically, and he's like, "This is not legal language. I don't know why they do this. <laughs> this is impossible to read." Uh, the doctor rolled a seven, though, so she actually manages to like renegotiate their contracts, um, and eventually quite effectively. Yeah, like eventually, like she tells um, Knox and Cairo and Oid to go and provide a video feed that like goes over the contents of the back of the U-Haul and you guys oh, like have to okay. go all the way back down go to the parking garage where they're taking your car you go, you go to the U-Haul you open the back of the U-Haul you stream this video to bonus who then projects it onto the conference table so that the executives can see what's going on so then Akem has to bring in their expert botanists to come in so they can verify what they're seeing the doctor's giving like her business pitch to these suits and to these botanists. So she it's her turn to use a bajillion bunch of jargon none of the suits understand. <laughs> she's just confusing them and trying to talk to the botanist. And the botanist is trying to parse what she's saying. And botanist is just sitting there, just more confused than anybody else. And you guys are just kind of giving this weird tour of these alien plants that are like strange, uh, weird, vibrant colors. Like the weird tentacle, purple tentacle plant. And look at this purple one. It's yeah, very tentacly. Very good with women. And, uh, you know, Popular with the ladies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lo Lone Star, women make do. You know? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, she, she gives this pitch and she pulls up, like, a bunch of, like, AR screens of her notes and research she's collected and, and this, like, PowerPoint that she's made over the past few days of your guys' traveling. And it's all, you know, got diagrams of, like, molecular structures and, like, chemistry nonsense that neither I, the, the DM, or bonus understand. And, um, because <laughs> I hate chemistry. <laughs> and, uh, please go science. And, um, you know, she's, she's given this big speech. It takes hours to do. Uh, but eventually, she gets them to agree to, uh, better terms than the normal and the standard okay um, cool so basically the general terms are she gives over all of her research she joins the company um, for life she has to live in the arcology and she cannot ever leave ever period god what a fucking I mean hey you know what as long as we're getting paid <laughs> yeah um, and of course, in her end of the deal, she gets a but a ton of money to get brought in. Not as much as she could have if she was just selling it, not getting all the benefits of being an employee, but she needs protection. Uh, and of course, her other thing is she gets like a management job working on her project, leading like a team of other researchers for this specific thing in R&D. And then her third uh, request is that they provide protection for her because Guy is trying to kill her. And the execs are all very keenly interested in that last point. And they, like, try to leverage her, saying, like, oh, well, we don't have to give you as much money because we have to give you protection. And then Bonus steps in and is like, actually, I'll have you know, I've, I've protected this woman just by, fine by myself. We don't need you, but we're coming to you because it benefits you, too. And he helps, that's, that's how he kind of helps talk them down and uh, put them in their place a little bit. <laughs> So, uh, Dr. Vanderhaus promised each of you 10k yes. when you got to Lone Star. So she will give you each 12.5k because oh. she got a little bit of a little bit of a better deal than uh, she had originally estimated. Not bad, not bad. You know what? Just for that, she can have my contact information if she ever gets lonely in the corporate district. Oh, I doubt it. But, you know. <laughs> On the off chance. On the off chance she gets that, you know, she's like, fuck. Yeah. I need Knox to move some boxes. Yeah. Uh, so you all make a bunch of money. Um, and as she pays you all digitally... Um, a squad of power armor wearing synthetic chem soldiers march into the conference room and like lead her away because she is now synthetic chem's property <laughs> huh so property yeah. lovely 
Yeah. Well, ain't that some so. shit. Okay. All right. <laughs> Time to go. Yep, and you guys are immediately ejected from the building. <laughs> And I do mean, so we, we have like those funny out. ejector seats in the conference yeah, just, table. Like, the, 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 your chair gets swallowed under the ground into a lava pit and you all die. Well, we weren't even in the conference room. Doesn't matter. <laughs> nope, doesn't matter. Alrighty then. <clears throat> Alright, you've all been paid. I've all updated your money amounts. Oid has a ton of cash, as per usual. Um, you're all removed from the building. You've received your paycheck. Nice. One of your many paychecks, rather. Um, and yeah, that's uh, is that. You've you've Off done it. To the meet. All right, now on to the date. All right, we will do that next episode. Ah. <laughs> well, if you'd like to see it, tune in next time. We'll see you next time on Quest for the Glory.